This is the city, Los Angeles, California. It's a big place. It's made up of a lot of little cities. Van Nuys, Encino, Watts, San Pedro, and of course, Hollywood. Here you can find tourists from all over the world. They also want to visit the inside of a movie studio, and if luck is with them, maybe see a movie star at work. If they miss their idols at the studio, they may try to catch them at home. Most sightseers are harmless. They come to look and take pictures on the front lawn. Sometimes others visit these homes at night and take what isn't theirs. When that happens, I go to work. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Wednesday, September 14th. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of Burglary Auto Theft Division. The boss is Captain Ken Green. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. We started off the day by studying a series of business burglaries which had begun to develop in the north end of the city. We had no suspects, no leads, and the problem was growing. Five so far this week. Yeah, four last week, six the week before. Doesn't look like they're gonna let up. Neither are we. No witnesses, prints wiped clean, and no pattern on the property taken. Did you get an answer back on the M.O. run? Yeah, I came in while you were talking to S.I.D. Any luck? No, they've had a few that use glass cutters, one or two that short-circuit alarm systems the same way, but not both together. What about the red cloth? No, uh, that's not even close. Didn't surprise me, though. Yeah, I've heard of trademarks, but this one takes the cake. Joe, Bill, that run of burglaries you're on? Yes, sir. Got another one for you. Chemical supply firm out on Reddington. Looks like the same group you're working on. How's that, sir? The owner said there was a piece of red cloth hanging from the rear door, just like that one. Just like this one. Just like this one. 9, 10 a.m., Bill and I drove over to the Almid Chemical Supplies Company. The owner, Mr. Alexander Middleton, was waiting for us. The officer on the phone told me not to touch a thing until you got here. I didn't. Yes, sir. What time did you find this? About 8.30 when I opened up. The door was just standing wide open. Anybody could have walked in here. Was this door locked last night? Sure was. Locked it myself. It's a regular routine with me. Lock all the doors and then turn on the alarm system. And then I double-checked the whole place. Well, it doesn't look like it's been pried or forced open. They must have got in someplace else and then they went out this way. Well, it just doesn't make any sense to me, Sergeant. What's that, sir? Well, whether they came in or went out through that door doesn't matter. The fact is, the door's open and my burglar alarm isn't ringing. How do you explain that? You didn't turn the system off. No, sir. I haven't done anything except call the police. I see. Contact seems to be OK. Joe, back window. They came in this way, all right. Used a glass cutter. And the system's been jumped. It's been what? Cross-circuited. They cut that hole in the window reach through and hook this wire to your alarm contacts. When the window was open, the alarm circuit didn't break. So that explains it. Yes, sir, that's right. Why it's not ringing. I always thought each circuit was independent of the others. But this little wire shut my whole system off, huh? No, sir, it shouldn't have. Break anywhere should make it ring. Well, that back door's still open and it's not ringing. Joe, pull one into that jumper off. That'll make it ring. That's funny. Could be just something wrong with the alarm and nothing to do with the burglary. No, sir. I checked it just before I left last night. It rang loud and clear then. And the system's still on. You got any ideas? It's by me. The only thing I can suggest is to have your alarm company come down and check it out. I'll do that. It just doesn't make any sense, does it? No, sir, it doesn't seem to. Somebody breaking in here? There's $200 in the cash register out front. It wasn't even touched. And besides that, there's really nothing of value around here but the chemicals. And they're no good to anyone unless you have a special use for them. Yes, sir. Would you know if any of your chemicals are missing? I couldn't say. I'd have to run an inventory first. Joe, found out the problem with the burglar alarm. Somebody stole it right off that outside wall. 
This paper, does this belong to you, sir? Can't say it does. No, I've never seen it before. What about anybody else working here? Clerks, stock boys, maybe? No, this is a small company, Sergeant. I hold the ship down myself. Is there anything significant on the list? Well, let's see. The first one's hydrochloric acid. Its most common use is metal etching. It's a fairly powerful acid. What about the others? HNO3, nitric acid, CH2OH, glycerol, CH3, toluene, and the last one even you can read, plain cotton. Yes, sir. I noticed that first one, the hydrochloric acid. I'd set off from the others on the list. Does that mean anything to you? No, I can't say that it does. Not much in common with the other chemicals, either. What about the others? Anything in common there? Well, the nitric acid's fairly common. It reacts with a number of chemicals. What's it usually used for? The production of organic nitrogen compounds is one of its most important uses. Well, now, would that have anything to do with the other chemicals? Well, why, yes, yes, of course. There is a common ground here. How's that? Well, the nitric acid reacts with each of the others, including the cotton. In what way? Well, they each form different kinds of explosives or propellants. Like what? Well, it depends on what you put with what. Now, nitric acid reacts with glycerol to form nitroglycerin. Put it with cotton and you get cellulose nitrate, or what you call gun cotton. What about the toluene? Nitric acid and toluene, trinitrotoluene, better known as TNT. Pretty powerful list, isn't it? Well, it could be. But if somebody has an idea to try to make some of those explosives, they left one item off their shopping list. Oh, what's that, sir? The catalyst, or another chemical which is introduced to speed up the process. In this case, the catalyst would be sulfuric acid. It's not on the list. Maybe they forgot it. Or they already have it. Mr. Middleton of the chemical supplies firm agreed to start an immediate inventory to determine what was missing. 1.10 p.m., we returned to the office. Oh, I can really feel it. I can feel it coming. It's aspirin and baking soda time for me. How's that? Headache, sour stomach, sore muscles. Happens every time. Every time. Don't be cute. You know what I'm talking about. I do. What are you thinking about right now? Those burglaries, right? That'd be logical. You're thinking this is the 16th one we've had in a little less than three weeks, and we haven't got lead one, right? Right. All we got to go on is a piece of red cloth hanging on 16 doors at 16 locations in a 10-square block area, right? Right. Now, what's that got to do with all your oncoming ailments? Joe, you know it happens every time. What happens? The headaches, the sour stomach, the sore muscles. You just lost me. Joe, you said it yourself. We haven't got anything to go on. What's the next logical step? A stakeout. See? I knew you were thinking about it. I could see it coming. You know what stakeouts do to me, Joe? Headache, sour stomach. And sore muscles. Now you've got it. Well, you got a better suggestion? Of course not. A stakeout's the only way to go. That's right. You know, sometimes you amaze me, Joe. p.m., the captain agreed to arrange for five teams from Metropolitan Division. Bill and I would supervise the stakeout operation. 7 p.m., we briefed the Metro teams for the first night stakeout. Two teams were to remain stationary at key points. The others, including Bill and me, would patrol the area. Friday, September 16th, the rolling stakeout was in its third day. Between 5 p.m. and 7 a.m., at least three units were cruising the area. Saturday, September 17th, 6.45 a.m. No results. In 15 minutes, we'd call it a day. Control to 1 King 80. 1 K 80, go. Control, somebody got by you last night. We have a 459 reported at 602 Colton. Will you handle? 1 K 80, roger. 6.55 a.m., we arrived at the Security Safe Company. The location was two blocks outside our stakeout perimeter. Found this on the floor by the rear window. Mean anything to you people? Number 17. Yes, sir, we've seen a few like it. Would you show us the point of entry, please? Right back here. Uh, how does that grab you? A real pro, huh? Same M.O., right down to the glass cutter. You figure they went out the same way? The door's been cross-circuited. Well, I'll be. How did I miss that? What about these? They mean anything to you? No, we cleaned the floor before closing last night. Looked like some kind of wheel tracks. Yeah. What kind of property did you find missing? Well, now, that's the strange part. Nothing. I checked the cash drawer. It wasn't even touched. All right, let's see where these lead. Try not to step on them. Yes, sir. Well, that's it. 
brother, right here, and I didn't even miss it. What's that, sir? A 120-pound fireproof safe. Was the safe locked? No, it was wide open. There was even a card inside with a combination on it. Better get SID down here for prints and photos. Right. Use your phone. I'm sure, help yourself. It's in the office. And tell them to come in the back way. Keep it out of the papers, you know. You know, when you get right down to it, it just doesn't figure. What's that, sir? Well, what a crook want with an empty safe? They usually break into them, not steal them. Well, I got an idea, maybe. What would anybody do with an empty safe? Practice on it. Turned to the office. The photo lab agreed to do a rush job on the tracks found in the security safe company. I'm going to take a nice hot shower, eat a bowl of sugar snack pops, and hit the sack. How about you? I'll skip the snack pops. You're missing the boat, Joe. They're good for you. Best cereal on the market. It is, huh? You bet. Vitamin B1, niacin, iron, and only 100 calories in a bowl. You think that'll offset those chili dogs you've had for the last three nights? You'll never understand the way I eat. I was about to say that. You guys can forget about checking those equipment rental lots. How's that? I've never seen a professional moving dolly like this. First off, whatever it was, it had four wheels. Take a look. See there, four tracks. Now this mark here at the top, some kind of a cut in a hard rubber wheel. The mark appears in the track every 36 inches. That means we're dealing with wheels approximately 12 inches in diameter. A little big for a moving dolly, huh? Well, that'd be my guess. But this is what cinches it. Now, this one was taken about halfway between the rear door and the front, apparently after the safe was loaded. Yeah, the width of the tire is quite a bit narrower, isn't it? Right. Whatever the safe was on couldn't stand up under the weight. You mean the thing collapsed? Just about. By the time the tracks reached the rear door, all four of them were pushed out, at least ready to collapse. Not much sense in looking for a rented moving dolly that can't hold 120 pounds, right? Well, what do you think was used? Off the top of my head, I'd guess it was a kid's wagon. There's plenty of them around. If somebody wanted to steal one, it wouldn't be much trouble. Yeah, well, that's the end of that, isn't it? We wouldn't have much luck trying to scout up one wagon out of two million. Well, thanks, John. Sorry I couldn't be more help. Kind of a dead end, huh? Did we get the results on that Middleton inventory yet? Yeah, we got it. Right here. Yeah, he was missing exactly those items on the list. What about sulfuric acid? No. Isn't that the one he called, uh, a catalyst? That's right. The one chemical necessary to make the explosives. And the suspects don't have it. Not that we know of. But they do have a safe. Yeah? What about it? Well, I've been thinking. Yeah? I don't know. Maybe they want to practice safe cracking with explosives. Go on. Maybe they'll go back to get some of that sulfuric acid. That's a lot of maybes, isn't it? Uh, one more. Maybe it's worth a try. <laughs> We arranged to stake out the chemical supplies firm starting at closing time, 10.35 a.m. We both went home for a few hours sleep. 6 p.m. We arrived at the Alamid Chemical Supplies Company. Mr. Middleton locked up and left the premises in our care. 10.30 p.m. The stakeout continued. 11.45 p.m. Almost six hours had passed. No results. Looks like we picked the wrong night. Maybe. Maybe. Your vocabulary's getting real limited these days. You know... Hold it. Hear that? What do you think? Doesn't look like anybody's coming in. Kill the alarm. for, don't we? Not much doubt. Question is, how soon do they hit after they mark? 1.05 a.m. We were certain the red cloth had marked the location for later entry. We waited. 1.50 a.m. Somebody's on the way in. Let him get all the way.
Hi. One fifty-eight a.m. We advise the subjects of their rights. Are you gonna tell my mother? Don't you think we should? You gonna take us to the police station? That's where you belong, don't you? Are you gonna talk to us? Yeah. Okay. What do you got here? H2SO4, sulfuric acid. What are your names? I'm Watermelon. He's Pumpkin. Your real names, boys. Jimmy Chambers. Timmy Michaels. Okay. Now, do you want to tell me why you broke in here? Yeah. We're supposed to get that stuff on the paper. What stuff? What's on that paper he's got? It's supposed to be in a bottle marked exactly the same way. What do you want it for? I don't know. It's some chemical stuff. Brain says it's some real boss stuff. He needs it. All right, now who's Brains? He's the boss. Did he send you here? Yeah. Do you know why? Just to get that chemical stuff. Do you know why he wants it? No, nope. he don't tell us nothing. What do you use that wagon for? That's to haul the stuff over to the clubhouse in. That's what we use that for. Where do your parents think you are? Sleeping. We snuck out of the house. You have to tell them. Afraid so. Boy, am I gonna get it. Yeah, me too. We were just doing what Brains told us. Who taught you how to cut a window and cross-circuit those alarm wires? Brains did. He made us practice, too. You do everything Brains tells you? Sure, he's older than us. Yeah, and smart, too. How old is he? Pretty old, all right. How old? Twelve and a half. Well, why isn't Brains with you now? Because he's the boss. Yeah, Brains is the boss. Don't ever pull the job. He just tells us what to do and puts the sign on the place. That red cloth. With the X on it. Where is this Brains now? Over to the clubhouse waiting for us. Said he was going to do a experiment. Experiment. That's what I said. What kind of experiment? Brains don't tell us nothing. He's the boss. 2.10 a.m. We turned the two boys over to juvenile officers after learning Brains' true name and the clubhouse location. 2.15 a.m., we arrived at the clubhouse. The door was open. What took you guys so long? Are you Horace Thornton? Police officer, son. Oh, I see. Well, what can I do for you gentlemen? You're under arrest for burglary. I'm afraid you've got the wrong person, officers. There's been some mistake. Your friends call you brains, do they? Yes, sir. That is right. All right, son. I'm going to read you your rights. I want you to listen closely. Yes, sir. You have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak with an attorney and to have the attorney present during questioning. If you so desire and cannot afford one, an attorney will be appointed for you without charge before questioning. Do you understand? Yes, I believe so. The part about speaking with an attorney what exactly does that mean? Well, it means if you think an attorney's advice and counsel would be wise to have before talking to us and you want to get it, we won't question you. No, I don't believe I need an attorney. I'm quite able to intelligently answer your questions. Now, where shall we start? How about the beginning, son? Where have you been tonight? Right here. I haven't left. That's not what Timothy and James say. Who? Watermelon and Pumpkin. Oh, you have them in custody? Their parents are picking them up now. I see. What did they tell you? Suppose you tell us. Well, I needed some chemicals, and the stores were closed. They didn't have to do it, you know. Son, this isn't the first time. Now, let's not start off on the wrong foot here, huh? All right, they work for me. How many other boys work for you? Ten, in all. I do their school homework for them. I'm quite intelligent, you know. Yeah. Now, why did you want that sulfuric acid? I had something to prove. That you could make an explosive, is that it? Not just an explosive officer, nitroglycerin. I was going to show him I could blow that safe wide open. Why? Because everybody said I couldn't. Who's everybody? All the kids. I taught them everything they know. If it wasn't for me, they never would have got in all those places. Here, let me show you something. This is a new idea I've been working on. Watch. Now observe. Secret formula, now.
see, is completely disabled. The mechanism has been melted and fused or frozen together. It can't possibly ring. And that's your idea of an accomplishment, is it, son? I have a theory about crime, gentlemen. Uh-huh. And just what is that? It pays. What makes you think so? Don't be naive, officers. Look around you. I do. Go on. Take my parents, for example. My father saves thousands of dollars every year by cheating on his income tax. I've heard him say so. You have. He doesn't get caught. And my mother, I've heard her talk about the bills and whatnot. She charges a bunch of things and doesn't pay for them. Pretty soon they get tired of sending her letters and give up. You see, officers, my parents are smart. So am I. Do your parents know about these burglaries you've been involved in? No, but I'm sure they'd understand. Does your father work, son? Yes, sir. He owns a used car lot. All right, now, if somebody stole a car from him, what do you think he'd do about that? That's simple. He'd call the police. Why? So they could get it back for him. That's a dumb question. Why should they get it back for him? Well, because it belongs to him. Now, what do you think should be done with a person that steals that car? Make darn sure he doesn't do it again. How should we go about that? Well, put him in jail, I guess. Teach him a lesson. Mm-hmm. Do you think that the people you stole all of these things from have a right to get them back? Well, yeah, I guess so. I never thought about it that way. You bet they do, son, because it rightfully belongs to them, doesn't it? Nobody else. Now, you know it's wrong to steal. That's why there are laws against it. I guess there's a flaw in my theory, huh? Yeah, and it kind of shows, doesn't it? just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On October 12th, a hearing was held in juvenile court, State of California, Los Angeles Judicial District. In a moment, the results of that hearing. The court placed Timothy Michaels, James Chambers, and eight other subjects on summary probation for a period of three months. The court ordered Horace Thornton to be placed on probation for a period of one year, during which time he was to undergo a series of psychiatric tests and therapy. <laughs> 